Greetings and salutations. Today we are going to be looking at the topic of properly installing Emacs on Windows. And you say to me, well, surely it's as simple as going to get the executable from the GNU website, installing it, and you've got Emacs up and running on Windows. Well, not really. It's not quite as simple as all that. It's much easier to install Emacs on Linux and to get Emacs working quickly on Linux than it is doing that on Windows. Now what we want is we want an experience of Emacs on Windows that is akin to our experience of Emacs on Linux and that's what I'm going to help you with today. I'm going to show you how to properly install GNU Emacs on Windows. Now I've done a separate video on configuring vanilla Emacs and if you want to configure your .emacs file then I refer you to that video. Today we are focused primarily on the installation process of GNU Emacs and I'm going to take you step by step through the process and show you what you need to do in order to get the fullest possible experience of Emacs on Windows. And I can tell you that once you've done this you will notice no difference whatsoever between running Emacs on Windows as it is on Linux. In fact, you probably will find that it's an even richer experience because there are certain things, in my opinion, that Windows does better than Linux in certain departments. But that is, of course, a subject for debate. But let's begin by looking at the steps. The first one is to create a home user variable. We're going to open up our Windows control panel. We're going to type in environment. We're going to go to edit system variables. And where it says startup and recovery, we're going to click environmental variables. And you'll see here, it says environmental variables and user variables for Woofy. Woofy is the user. That's me. I am Professor Woofy. Why do they call me Woofy? Because I like dogs. That's also a story for another day. But let's look at this variable that we need to create called home. You will see here the name is home in capital letters and we have to give a particular directory as the variable value. And this directory can be anywhere on your hard drive. I have created it in the root of my C drive. Here it says red and that is where all of my Emacs files and configuration will live. You can of course create a folder anywhere you like within Windows. It makes no difference where it is provided you put in the right information here. Once you have done that, you are ready to go. Now, if you are migrating an installation of Emacs from Linux or from another operating system, you need to copy .emacs.d to this home directory that you have created. And all of your Emacs files and packages will come pre-installed. And you don't have to worry about reinstalling them. If you are not migrating from Linux and this is a fresh installation of Emacs, then you need to do nothing because Emacs will automatically generate this .emacs.d folder for you when you run it for the first time. Again, if you are migrating, one of the things that you will need to do is to change any file paths in your .emacs. So let me just give you an example of that. Here you can see that I have some directories and load paths. I've changed these to reflect Windows rather than Linux. And one thing that you will notice, when you are configuring your paths in your init file in a Windows environment, let's just go here and let's go to this red folder and copy this link. When we paste a link, you'll see that it pastes with the backslash, which is your typical 
Windows way of referencing a particular folder. Whereas what you need is a forward slash. So you will need to make sure that all of your backslashes are converted to forward slashes. Otherwise, it's just not going to work. Now let's get to the really good stuff, which is downloading and installing Emacs. And there are a thousand ways to skin a cat, as they say. But this is the way that I am setting before you. I'm not saying it's the only way. I'm not saying it's the best way. It's a way, and it's the way I like, because it's simple. I like to keep things as simple as possible. If you click on this link, you will download the zip file of the latest stable release of Emacs, which at the point of this video is 28.2. And you can extract that folder anywhere on your C drive. I'll show you where I put mine. Right over here, Emacs dash 28.2 and if we go in it we see a series of folders that contain everything that we need in order to run Emacs and if we go into the bin folder we'll see our executable files now the one that is of interest to us is run Emacs.exe and we're going to create a shortcut to that on our desktop in the old days, you, you used to need to click on add pm.exe. That is no longer required. You don't have to do anything except create a shortcut to your executable. Then you open up the shortcut. You'll see I've already created one. And then what you'd like to do is you'd like to pin the icon to your taskbar for easy access and you simply right click on it and click pin to the taskbar. Now there's a little catch to this which a lot of people don't realize and they get hopelessly lost. You'll see here the Emacs icon. If I right click on it and then move my mouse up to where it says Emacs and right click again and click with my left mouse on properties, I need to make an amendment You'll see when you do this that instead of having run emacs.exe here, you have emacs.exe. You need to change that to run emacs.exe and then you'll have no problems. And then when you click on it, you have emacs starting beautifully for you. So that's it. There is emacs installed on your system. So simple. But what we really want to do is we want also to install the other programs that are required in order to give you the richest possible experience with Emacs on Windows. What's the point of having Emacs if you can't do searches for files, if you can't find information within files, if you haven't got Pandoc, if you haven't got uh, Git, and all of these things. So that's what we're going to do now, and I'm going to show you how to do it. The next step is to go to this link that I provided for you, which is going to give you access to three folders. An AG folder, which contains the binaries for the AG program. AG is a program like GREP that searches within files. I prefer AG to GREP because AG is quicker, but if you like GREP, you can find the Windows version of it and install that instead. Then we have find utils, which has the executable find.exe, which will allow you to find files from within Emacs by name with the command find name dread, which is a key command in Emacs. And then finally, I've got a folder here that I've created for you called Hunspell, which will contain everything you need in order to do spell checking uh, within Emacs on Windows. And I've got all the dictionaries here that are English dictionaries, including the British spelling which I use, because as you know, only the British know how to spell. I'm going to get back to those programs in a moment, but let me just show you where they are on my system. 
there's Ag, there's Fine Dutils, and there's Hunspell. With Fine Dutils, the file that you need to access lives in this bin folder. It's find.exe. There's also locate.exe, which I don't use too often. Then we need to install Pandoc. One of the things that I have noticed over the years is that I'm always running into a situation where I need Pandoc. So it's always a good idea to install Pandoc, especially for file conversion. And here this link will take you to the 64-bit version, which you can easily install. And then be sure to set this line in your init.l file. This will allow you to export markdown files to HTML. And since I use quite a lot of markdown files, I do need this. Even if you use org mode, you're going to need Pandoc, especially on Windows, because one of the things you might like to do is to export org files to a docx format or to complex PDFs. And that you cannot do without Pandoc. The next step is to add these um, folders to our executive path within Emacs. And here I've listed them for you. You have to make sure that, of course, they're the same on your system. And you access them by going to Customize User Interface and doing a little search for Exec. And here is the exec path. And there you'll see all the folders that I am referencing. With the find utils, it has to be the bin folder. Then you've got your Pandoc, your Emacs folder, which is optional, Hunspell, which contains your spelling and ag. And make sure that those are correct and that you've got forward slashes and not backslashes. Otherwise, it won't work. The Ag program is a program, as I said, that allows you to find strings within files. Here is the Silver Searcher information that you need for your init.l. Just copy and paste that just to get the program up and running. Let me give you a quick example of Ag. Let's do a search for, I wrote a letter this morning that contained the word cousins. A letter to my cousins. There we go. Very quick, very nice. The find program, as I said, allows you to find files by name. It's much better than the find program that comes with Windows, uh, which allows you to find nothing ever at any time, no matter how hard you look for it. I don't know how Microsoft manages to do that, but they just have a knack of screwing up their find program. But thankfully, if you use Emacs, you don't need to worry about that because you've got the find program at your fingertips. And let's have a look for that file that I made this morning, uh, which had the name Cousins in it. And there it is, letter to Cousins. Sounds ominous, but it wasn't. Be sure to add this line of code to your init.l file because sometimes even if you have the program in your path, it doesn't find it for some reason. And so you need to make that explicit by adding this line to your init.l file. And then there's one little thing that I've learned from hard experience. You need to make one more tweak in your system variables. So if you go here to your control panel and go to edit system variables, go to environmental variables, environment variables, and then where it says system variables here, you double click on where it says path. And you've got to make sure that find utils is at the top. If it's not at the top, then what will happen when you run the find command is that it will bring up the Windows find executable, 
rather than the fine executable you need within Emacs. And if you don't have that showing at all, you need to add it by clicking New, Browse, browsing to where that folder is. And remember, it's the bin folder that we want to reference. And we move it to the top. And now it'll work fine. Then we come to Hunspell. Of course, you can also use A spell, but I have found that A spell on Windows is a very painful experience. A spell is a very good program, but it's now showing its age. If you're going to use that, then use it on Linux and rather use Hunspell on Windows. This is all the code that you're going to need in order to get Hunspell working, provided, of course, that you have specified the paths that I have spoken about previously. Only one thing you might want to change here is change English Great Britain to English USA and be, make sure that you change all the particular instances uh, in this code. No Emacs experience is complete if you cannot use Simlinks. Now, some links are available in Windows, but you need to act, you need to enable them. Only the Lord knows why, but you need to do that. So let's go to the old run command, which I think goes back to Windows 95. Type in secpol.msc and click OK. And then we go to local policies, user rights assignment, and where it says create symbolic links, you double click on that. And by default, you should have administrators there. I've added Woofy, which is the user of this account. And you would simply add the user on your system. Check the name, click OK, and some links will be available for you to run within Emacs. And let me give you an example of why that's important. Let's say we've got our home folder read, but we frequently access folders in our user directory. So let's go into our user directory. Let's make a symlink to Woofy in our home folder, capital S. There you see you've got Woofy and you can easily access the files there. And that's not possible unless you have some links. And then last but by no means least, you will need to install Git if you are a programmer and if you use Git, of course. And here is the 64-bit uh, executable link. You can just click on it and download it. When you install the program, make sure that you install OpenSSH if you use GitHub or um, similar type repositories. You will need to open PowerShell after that and type in SSH keygen. This will create your SSH keys. Copy the value of the SSH public key and then save that public key in your GitHub account settings. Be sure to create your SSH keys in your home folder, whatever, whatever name you've assigned, assigned to it. it. Take, Take care, care folks. folks.